is I've increasingly introduced you, the viewer, to our growing global team. People have asked me, why is it you chose to hire in the places that you did? Why do you hire, as we have, primarily in Eastern Europe? Uh, what is it that brought you to that being the place to go? Some people being curious and wanting to learn, some people just being critical. And so I want to speak to both sides of that today. I'm going to share with you a real life story of how I came to this conclusion. I'm going to share with you some facts that might be helpful in your business hiring. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson and here at Nomad Capitalist, my team helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors from all around the world legally go where you're treated best. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. Today, I'm gonna to share a story. If you've been watching us for a long time, you may know how Nomad Capitalist started. I was in the process of selling pretty much everything I owned in the United States down to my final business and my home. And before those two final things were sold, I had been traveling for years uh, to where the majority of my time, I believe, was spent outside of the US. And by the time I sold all of those things, I was living full time outside of the US and experiencing just what this nomad capitalist lifestyle looked like. However, the business of nomad capitalist had not really developed at that point. I had some money from selling businesses and money that I'd saved along the way. And this was my way to explore. And I wanted to, to write about my experiences in the early blogs on Nomad Capitalist where I just met with this guy in the Philippines and he's a lawyer and he's interesting. And then it was funny, like a month later, he'd say, I just got 40 calls from people who read your blog. I didn't know anyone read the blog. But eventually over time, it became more and more of a business and I had to start hiring people. And for some reason, not exactly sure why, I had run businesses with some hiring before. I always, like any business owner, I tried to keep things lean. Um, and... So I didn't really know how to do that internationally. We had you know, people from Germany, Australia, Austria, the US, maybe a couple others who, who came in and out and you know, made some friendships out of that. Uh, but I never really got the fit. Um, certain people came and worked and then went off and started their own business or went off and did something else that they were passionate about. And I remember one time, it was about six years ago, I was in Romania. I was doing a swing through Southeastern Europe. I was sitting in Bucharest and I met a number of people who I recall not only had really good spoken English, but had great American accents. And I thought to myself, this would be a good place, you know, as I was starting to develop this business, uh, you know, for hiring people for customer service. At the time, it was largely email customer service. Now, obviously, we're much more involved with people on the phone and, and email and all that. Uh, but I said, what a great place for, you know, if people needed to, to talk to, you know, our audience, that they could do that. And so... A little bit of time went by and we needed to expand and um, I remember running an ad. Facebook ads have been one of the most successful places for us to hire. And so I placed it and I said, all right, this Bucharest, this seems phenomenal. Let's run it in all of Romania. And then I guess I just kind of started clicking around different countries and I said, all right, let's just do the whole kind of Southeast European region. And what I noticed was we didn't get that many job applications from Romania. In fact, we recently went back and just tried just to kind of see if we could hire people in Romania, uh, Moldova as well. We got almost none. Um, but what has worked out back from, from when we first started it up until this day was the one country that always stood out to us was Serbia. We ran ads and we figured out how to connect with people in Serbia and said, hey, we've got a job opportunity. And partially due to the fact that there is a little bit higher unemployment in Serbia than there is in some neighboring countries, partially due to the fact that we were able to pay more than some places in Serbia, or that people wanted to work for an international company more so, and there weren't as many of them as in neighboring countries, all those things, plus some other factors, it just always seemed to be a good place for us to hire. And so, you know, we had one person from Serbia, and then it was another, and then I think at one point we had, you know, a couple of people from the Balkan region, different countries. Uh, and ultimately, as the team grew, I realized that the best way for them to, uh, to work together, um, you know, being you know, where they come from and the kind of work we do was to be with each other nearby. And since it became hard to recruit people who wanted to travel, uh, maybe only one out of 10 people or one out of eight people really wanted to travel. And out of those, you know, one out of eight of them would have enjoyed it after a year or two and they would have wanted to come back. So I said, all right, we're gonna let people do what most people wanna do, which is stay in their city. Uh, work where, you know, they're familiar with, continue living with their girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, live near their mom, go to the bar that they like down the street, whatever. Uh, and I think that sometimes you know, the people in the, in the nomad circle, the digital nomad circle, 
live a little bit in a bubble. I understand work is increasingly becoming remote, especially due to the, due the pandemic, and that is happening worldwide, more so in the Western world, but certainly worldwide. I do think that there are still many cultures where people don't really understand that, and you're not going to change people's minds. I also think that a lot of people who want to work in a company, even if they're more entrepreneurial employees, they like the idea, maybe have taken a month trip every year, but they like the idea of living where they're comfortable. Most people, I think, want to do that. That's why most people aren't nomadic capitalists. You know, we have millionaires and multimillionaires who say, you know what, the taxes here in my country are crazy, but I wouldn't leave it for anything. And so it's only fair to think that plenty of people who are working at a, a job would feel the same way. And so anyway, uh, we decided to put everyone in one place. And so we had to increasingly focus on one, one place. And so that was my story is uh, we started out and we started in Serbia and now still the, the, the bulk of our team, the largest part, the plurality of our team is, uh, is in Serbia. Now, you know, adapting to different cultures is certainly important. Um, I think a lot of people hire in Asia and there's certainly a big cultural difference. That's why you know, Eastern Europe always worked for me. I felt that there was too much time managing people from other parts of the world because the culture was so different. Eastern Europe, I feel, uh, you have enough similarities, but certainly having just spent you know, three months in Belgrade, I'm always reminded that we are somewhat different. I actually picked up a, uh, a great book on uh, Serbian culture that I'm, I'm reading and I'm learning, you know, that certainly you know, people in that part of the world are different than someone from the United States. Uh, but it's always been a good place for us to go and hire. English in a place like Belgrade is very widely spoken, so that was not an issue. You have people who are well-educated, speak multiple languages. Uh, it's just a good place. Uh, and so we've expanded into other places. We looked at the Balkans and we said, okay, where can we maybe have an influence? Maybe we can we go and, um, you know, stand out um, and, you know, pay people a lot more than they would make somewhere else. We looked at Skopje in Macedonia. Uh, we hired some folks there. Long term, it didn't really work out for us um, besides just referrals from existing people. So we stopped. Uh, and we realized that the government there probably wasn't as, as eager to encourage us to hire as we had hoped. Uh, then we went to Armenia, a place I've been looking at for a while, and, and about a year or so ago, I said, maybe the best place to hire entry-level administrative talent in the world, because you have people who are very hardworking, there's a diaspora, people come back and, and talk about the values of hard work, and so it's a very affordable place to hire. Again, good amount of people who uh, are, are multilingual, uh, people with good educations, people who have lived or have family overseas, so they understand that, that culture, and so Armenia's been very good to us. Uh, I've talked for years about Georgia. I've never said it was the best place to hire. Uh, and I think there's definitely a different vibe in Georgia, but through referrals we have opened up and we have hired some folks in Georgia. Now, what is the benefit of these places? None of these places are in the EU. And so what have I found? Why have we stuck with these places? It's because if I were to go and hire a bunch of folks in the United States as a global business, I don't spend any time in the United States. I work with folks in the United States as well as many other places but I'm not in the United States, and so therefore I can leave a very, lead a very uh, tax-friendly lifestyle. If I went and hired a bunch of folks in the US, uh, or potentially Canada or Australia, the tax code there is much more complicated and it's much more uh, disadvantageous to hiring there as a global business. Obviously, if you, if you have a business in the US, you're gonna hire Americans, your taxes aren't gonna change. Uh, but in some you know, version of the political attack ads that say so-and-so of supported tax breaks that ship jobs overseas, a guy like me is not going to be in his tax-friendly position if I hire someone in a number of Western countries. And so what I'm looking for is places where I can hire, uh, where I can find people uh, that are you know, good, who speak English, who want to work hard. Obviously, in every country, there are plenty of people who don't want to work hard, who've got a bad attitude, and you've got a screen for that anywhere. And I think it's easy to go to another country and to say, oh, it's these people in there and their approach, or it's these people in their culture. Certainly you have to adapt to different cultures. Um, the payoff is you can potentially you know, pay less. That's not my number one objective, uh, but I have learned that if you pay people much, much, much more than they would expect, you don't really get rewarded for doing that. You know, if, someone's, if, if, if someone's friends all make $800 a month and you pay them $5,000 a month, you're gonna eventually have some problems. Um, Maybe if you, if you stair-step them up to that, you know, that's going to be better. But if you just start them off at you know, 10 times the monthly average wage, it's not going to work. Um, so I like to bring in people who I can afford to test out at a lower price point and then work them up to a salary that, 
that might not be that different than what I would pay someone in um, a slightly more developed country like in the US or in the EU or something like that. But really, for me, it's about countries. It's always about go where you're treated best. Countries that incentivize, in this case, through the tax code and other ways, people coming and hiring. So if you hire people in the United States, are you going to get a residence permit? Potentially through the E2 visa program, you could do something like that. Um, but by and large, just hiring someone is not going to get you, you know, U.S. citizenship or U.S. residence. Um, and so there are opportunities in many countries that have more simple tax codes where not only uh, is it easier to hire, if you have a foreign corporation, it's easier to interact with hiring in that country. It's a more f simple you know, tax structure than it would be in the U.S., for example. Uh, but also you might get a benefit. You might say, okay, I'm going to start a company that's going to employ my staff and I'm going to get a residence permit out of this. Or maybe I can even get citizenship out of this. And we've talked about countries, Bulgaria, for example, if you hire 10 people, Portugal, if you hire 10 people, you can get on a track to potentially having citizenship. And so there's a benefit to that on top of the fact that Western countries have largely disadvantaged global businesses that live, uh, quote unquote, in the cloud like mine from going and hiring, because my structure would be a lot more complicated, if not impossible, uh, to maintain the tax friendliness that I have. And so why would I take all the benefits that I have from living overseas, uh, from, from living the nomad capitalist lifestyle, only to go back and screw that up by hiring in a country that disadvantages me from, from hiring in their country? Um, so you know, being able to pay people less to start is a nice benefit because it allows me to take more risks, right? It allows me to hire more people uh, and try more things out and say, you know what, let me experiment doing this. And if it doesn't work after a year, I'll find another job for the person or, you know, I'll find another position for them within the company or maybe they just won't like it, whatever, right? So there's a lower startup cost, but, you know, by and large, I'm not trying to keep people at a low salary forever. I want everyone to grow. And that's what we've done over the last couple of years. But lower risk, easier tax code, other benefits like immigration, keeps your life a lot simpler. That's my own personal experience, what drove me to uh, Eastern Europe. Again, everyone's culture is going to be different, uh, but I found I think it is a bit of a hidden gem compared to some of the places where people are often hiring. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your nomad capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.